What a bountiful time of year this is. There's loads here in the raised beds and the abundance of summer has truly arrived with loads to pick, pluck and pull. From warm season crops such as zucchini or courgettes, beans to tomatoes any day now, to cooler season crops, roots, leaves and so on such as beets and beetroot, chard, salads and much more besides. There's a lot to explore so follow me. Okay so starting here we've been getting loads and loads of beets or beetroot. I sowed these in clusters so that as they grow they push apart each other and I've been harvesting the big ones one at a time and leaving the smaller ones to grow on and that's work to treat. The lettuces were here, they finished now, pulled out. I'm going to be planting either some chard or kale, not sure what yet, but if you watch next week's video you'll be able to see what goes in here. Curiously there's also this rather beautiful chamomile I've no idea how it got here, but I love it. It's a great companion plant, very attractive to all sorts of insects, and it confuses some pests as well. So that's staying put. Here, there were also some lettuces, and I filled them with second sowings of more beets or beetroot and these salad onions, which you can barely see here, but they're in front of the larger ones, which are being uh, plucked up as and when they're needed. There's a few holes here, and uh, I've caught Rosie in the act of digging and foraging around. Not good. Um, I'll have to do some better training there, I think. This is bulb fennel or Florence fennel. I love its beautiful filigree leaves and they're beginning to heart out a bit here. It's late summer now, or the second half of summer at least, so they shouldn't bolt so easily. So these should form a really usable bulb. So I'm really looking forward to those. And talking of usable bulbs. Look at these celeriac. They were a bit sorry for themselves. They had leaf minor and were sagging a bit in the heat, but they've really greened up and they've got really firm now and the roots are beginning to form. So I can't wait. I love it mashed with potato. It sort of gives a lovely mild mash on top of um, shepherd's pie or something. Delicious. These are main crop carrots, which I thinned out about, ooh, maybe two weeks ago. And I've been so impressed with how quickly they've put on growth. Uh, they're not quite ready yet, but if I pull one up, oh, do you know what, maybe they are ready. Look at that, that's a beautiful carrot. It could probably go a bit larger. Um, but again, because it's the second half of summer and these were sown quite late, they're less at risk of bolting or flowering prematurely. So it should give a really usable crop. And that's a stunner of a root. So that's, uh, that's going in for tonight's dinner. After a bit of an unpromising start to the growing season, things have really started to grow nice and quickly. It was cold, it was quite late frosts up until sort of May, and then things slumbered a bit, but bang, it's really grown. And if you look at these shots of the vegetable garden in mid-June, and then again in the first week of August, you can see that in the space of six weeks, everything has come on dramatically. The onions in this bed if you take a good look into them now you can see that they're beginning to reach full size and I reckon another two or three weeks the leaves will start flopping over and that's the cue to let them rest for a bit and then dig them up ready to cure and store. If you look closely at the leaves there's some spotting on the leaves and that's very early signs of rust. Now it's going to be a bit of a race between the bulb being ready and the rust consuming the plants but my money is on the bulbs because it's perfect weather for them to swell and grow now and I think the rust uh, won't have enough time to consume the crop so I'm not worried about that. Behind them are these leeks. These follow on uh, from an earlier crop of fava or broad beans and in their place went these leeks. I had to wait quite a long time uh, for this space to become vacated so I had to actually pot the leeks on into their own plug trays. I'm not sure what that'll do to the eventual sort of size and quality of the stems, but they've really perked up in the last few days with the rain we've been getting, so I'm quietly optimistic. It's always tempting to cram plants in and I have to really restrain myself. Uh, cramming plants in really is counterproductive because that just um, stops air flowing between the plants, it encourages disease and it means you have a lacklustre harvest. 
One way I avoid that is simply to use the garden planner, which automatically gives the correct spacing for each crop so they're optimally spaced. I'll pop a link to it in the description down below so you can take a look for yourself and take advantage of the free trial on offer too. And now if we move over here, we can see some of the warm season crops. And look at these absolute monsters. These are the zucchini or courgettes. And I'm getting about one or two courgettes a day from these two plants. And that's more than enough. And I love them. They're a lovely ribbed variety. I think it's Romanesco. And they've got a lovely nutty flavor. I'm so thrilled with these. They're looking grand. There's a risk that they're gonna overwhelm these uh, parsnips. And I want these obviously for the winter. So I'm hemming them in with sticks to keep these uh, rambunctious leaves uh, tamed and at bay. But uh, so far so good. And then we've got my beautiful teepee of French beans or fine beans. They're coming along, but the flowers are beautiful. It adds a lovely bit of height to the garden and uh, it's my pride and joy really. I'm really pleased with it. Uh, and again, if you uh, see the clip that I'll put on screen now of it back in uh, mid-June, you can see how quickly it's rattled up to the top. I pinched out the very tops to concentrate the growth into bean and flower production as well. Right, now onto my sweet corn. And I'm, I know I'm enthusiastic about a lot of things, but this is my pride and joy right now. Back in early June, I was saying, oh, once it's uh, knee high by the 4th of July, it's fine. And it did just about get to knee high by the 4th of July. And then in the space of one and a half weeks, it got to suddenly six foot tall and, and here we are. Um, there's been a few things I've been concerned about. I've been worried about them flopping over because we do get wind barreling in. So I've been and banked the soil around the roots that are exposed, but that keeps a, keeps a bit of support down at the base. And also pollination. I want those cobs to be nice and full. So um, what I've been doing is tapping them and all the pollen sprinkles down onto the silks down below the female silks. And uh, it's quite satisfying um, watching the clouds of pollen drift down. You can actually see them and uh, yeah, fantastic. So I've just been doing that every time I'm passing. It's probably one of the nicest jobs in the garden. I'm pretty confident of good full cobs. They're beginning to fill out already and there's still lots of summer to come. The way to harvest them, of course, is to get your pot boiling away and then harvest quickly, run to the kitchen, whack them in so they're super, super fresh. And the best corn I've ever had in my entire life was when I was staying in Portland, Oregon and the corn season was in full flourish and I had fresh corn oh, every night with loads of butter and, and pepper. Oh, just magic, can't wait for that. If I can bring you back here, um, something that goes with pretty much everything I um, cook is, is garlic. And these are garlic scapes, basically the flower buds and they hook over. And there are lots of things you can do with this. You can um, fry them off and serve them like a sort of garlicky bean. Um, what else can you do? Dip them in like a tempura batter, deep fry them and serve them with some sort of sweet chili dip or something, or steam them. There's a lot you can do. They're also good like uh, kind of garlicky chives. I'm gonna pick these all off and do something delicious with them for tonight's dinner and then let the bulbs finish growing. And now follow me and I shall show you our vegetable arch. Here we are. It's threading through nicely and you can see I've got the first beans. I've been picking them already. I picked some last night. I probably should have left them for today's filming, but can you resist fresh runner beans? I can't, so um, they're beginning to dangle through anyway and there's a profusion of flowers. It's a real showstopper in the garden. It really is. And uh, just, uh, I don't know, it just epitomizes high summer in my opinion. Once the vegetable arch closes over and it's a lovely green surround all around you, it's just wonderful. And sometimes on a nice evening, I like to get my comfy chair out and just sit here surrounded by the beans and looking down at the, uh, the zucchini courgette and the other bean tower and it's lovely. I've also got these little gherkins here. So um, I'm gonna do something interesting with them. I'm not sure yet, but if you guys happen to have a recipe for pickling for gherkins, um, something a bit different, do let me know. Drop, drop me a comment down below. And in fact, there's so much here that is gonna be in such abundance from the beets or beetroot 
to the courgettes, to the beans. Um, I'm going to be freezing a lot of it and canning or bottling a lot as well. And I'll include a link down below to the videos for those because we've got some fantastic videos on freezing and canning. This is where some garlic was harvested that I was telling you about just earlier. And I planted some more um, celery here. It's been a bit slow if I'm honest but I think it's just been a bit dry and no matter how much you water it, celery is effectively um, a bog plant and it really likes almost saturated soil. So now it's a bit rainier uh, and it's a bit cooler. I think it'll probably um, start coming away nicely. And here, da 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 da, tomatoes. Ah, just look at them, they're, they've all reached a good size now. They're big, beautiful, ballsy tomatoes and uh, they're gonna color up soon. Because they're outdoors, and I know there's um, tomato blight lurking in neighbouring counties, other gardeners have told me this, so it's kind of, well, you know, it's any moment now, so I'm really hoping they ripen up before that happens. But to help them on their way, I'm going to what's called stop the tomatoes, which just means pinching out the very top, and I'll also remove any side shoots that appear, so that you're stopping effectively the foliage from growing, and then all the tomatoes and the flowers that are left will have a chance to set fruit and swell fruit and ripen. So I'm going to go around and just yeah, pinch out the tops or stop them and check regularly for side shoots that appear and just nip those out. And here's my main uh, sort of uh, couple of rows of chard. It's continually trying to bolt or flower, um, but I just pick the whole thing off and all of that gets used, gets dropped into my smoothie and uh, it doesn't have a bitter taste like you might get from bolted lettuce for example it's still got a lovely smooth taste so every bit gets used and by constantly removing these flower stalks you make it last a bit longer winter squash here they're doing their thing they're growing all right um, there are some fruit setting there's one there for example uh, we've got two months really before they're harvested so I'm pretty sure they'll get on and do their thing and um, reach harvest in time and then we got this new herb bed which was installed and you can see a, our recent video on that uh, it's still looking a bit sort of uh, new but it will flesh out uh, it'll be great because sometimes there's the reluctance to go in the garden and gather herbs when it's cold or rainy or wet but this way right by the back door I'll be much more incentivized to do that and fresh herbs transform cooking don't they Right, let's uh, go on down here and have a look at the other vegetable growing area and see what's growing there. Right, so this is, uh, this is something that was um, looking very unpromising earlier in the summer. It was covered in um, uh, white fly and aphids and I said at the time, oh, I'm pretty sure the uh, ladybugs or ladybirds will take care of it. Well, they have. These are my black currants and all of this new growth has arrived in the last um, month and a half. There's not any fruits yet, I wouldn't expect that. These were taken from cuttings winter before last. But next year, I'm hopeful. I think they've reached a good size now and I should get some black currants. The rhubarb is galumphing all over the place, but I love the stems and I think maybe I, I was too conservative in, in not picking any this year. I was like worried about the plants not establishing properly. Well, I think we can say it's uh, pretty well established now. So I'm going to leave it for now, but next uh, season we're going to have rhubarb crumble for tea. I don't know, every day probably. And then over here, I've got four outdoor tomato plants and uh, they've grown really tall. And again, because I'm a bit nervous about blight and about um, the onset of autumn, quite frankly, I'm going to uh, stop them by pinching out the tops and continuing to remove side shoots. But uh, it's a little bit shadier here, if I'm honest, but there are tomatoes forming, and um, so we will get something. It'll just be a bit later than everything up there. And there's these lovely nasturtiums at the bottom weaving between everything. I love nasturtiums. I love the little seed pods. As, uh, I think they're called poor man's capers. They kind of uh, a good alternative. And the flowers, of course, are beautiful. Uh, to brighten and pretty up a salad, a garden salad. I'm going to put some kale in here, possibly some chard. I've also got a whole load of more leeks to put in. And then these, the potatoes. These were grown in straw and um, it's kind of um, 
interesting to see how we get on. Okay, so yeah, they're still a bit small, so I'll let them grow on, but there's some usable new potatoes here. Some quite nice ones, these are quite pretty. That, those would be lovely with a bit of, um, bit of butter and some uh, mint from the garden. Uh, but yeah, clearly they need to grow on just a little bit longer. But uh, the encouraging thing is they're clean, there's no slug damage, there's no um, rusts or um, uh, any sort of fungal disease on them. So they're doing all right, really. A few people were concerned about growing them in straw because um, other people have experienced things like um, mice and so on getting in there and nesting in there. And that is a concern, but I've been very lucky so far, but I'm sure my luck will run out one day. So this is what I'm really excited about. Down here, we got the very, very first tomatoes beginning to color up. And one of them is turned red. It's a plum tomato, um, Roma, I think. And uh, there's plenty more coming along I did um, pollinate a lot of these by uh, buzzing them with an electric toothbrush and also by just coming along and tapping the poles every now and then that they're on to kind of shake the pollen down. And well, it's hard to, hard to know, but I do think it has worked and it has made a difference uh, based on previous years. Over here, uh, these are my peppers, chili peppers and um, aubergine or eggplant. Some of them are grafted, which means that the variety I'm growing is stuck onto the rootstock of another plant. And what that means is it gives it vigor and a certain amount of things like disease resistance and just general resilience. And it uh, doesn't look like they grow much, but there are little tiny flowers on these. So uh, I'll definitely get some, uh, something to, to pick before the end of summer. And the same with the uh, aubergine or eggplants. There's lots of little flowers forming now. This one wasn't grafted. I bought this at um, just a plant sale and it was way ahead, but you can see that the ones that are grafted, these three, are actually ahead. So it just goes to show it, um, it does obviously work. Let's go and look at the ornamental borders because there's a lot of cheer there to feed the soul and feed the spirit. And here I am in the ornamental border, completely surrounded by colour and the buzz and industry of insects. And there's so much here. There's this goldenrod or solidago, crocosmia, this lovely achillea or yarrow at the front here. There's liatris, echinacea, verbena. There's so much going on here. And if I get my eye in, I can see lots of butterflies, different types of bumblebees and honeybees as well, hoverflies. It's just humming and buzzing with life. All of this was started very cheaply from plug plants that were planted out last spring and they filled out really well, too well in fact. So this autumn, one of the jobs, once everything's died back, is going to be lifting, splitting and replanting to give everything more space and to spread the joy. And that's one of the great things about gardening, isn't it? You turn your back for mere moments and something else has cropped up put on a growth spurt or reach maturity. And it's probably why we all garden, isn't it? I would love to know how your summer is coming along too. So do tell me by dropping me a comment down below. Check your subscribe while you're there, hit the notification bell. And if you'd like to see my last garden tour six weeks ago to see how much things can grow in the space of six weeks, then follow the playlist at the end of the video. I'll catch you next time.